Because if somebody can convince me, I'm open, I'm all ears, 888-957-9570, convince me that this Warrior team likes playing with each other, because I don't think they do. Okay, counterpoint, the three games, four game winning streak, the vibes were great. I was at that game against the Clippers, and that means that I know more about it than the people that watched on TV. <laughs> the vibes <laughs> were great. The vibes were A+. Plus. You had Draymond. Remember, we talked about Kaminga when he fouled, and he got mad, and Clay just reached out and went, dog, and he went, you're right. Mm-hmm. And then you had Matt Nahigian posting the video of D- of Draymond and Jordan Poole, dap, yep. pro hug. Well, hug. Like, we are back, baby. That's right. The Warriors are back. So it's there. It's in there. All it takes, you said this in the changeover, and I think you're right. All it takes is that one little thing. That thing that should be a eh, minor inconvenience turns into a game-losing issue. Do, have you ever gotten into an argument had someone else being like, dude, you guys sound like a married couple. What does that mean? It means people are fighting over little crap that the rest of us are like, why don't you just brush your shoulder off? Like, Why, why did that Correct. bother you so much? Right. It bothered you so much. Because inside that home, you got two people that did just a pick, 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 pick for 30 years and 35 years. And sometimes that rubs people raw to the point where it's like, I can't take it anymore. And you freak out over small things such mm-hmm. as, I don't know, <sighs> not getting the ball at the free throw line on a random play in the second quarter. And you just, you're like, I'm leaving. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going for a walk. Like all the, I did was ask you to wash your dish out. Can you not all here's the common thread for me. Cause I'm not there. You're all right. Some of you are gonna be like, you don't know. You don't know Jordan Poole. You're right. I don't. Mm-hmm. Here's what I see. Consistent overreactions. You don't mm-hmm. know Jordan Poole. That's what I see. Throwing mouthpieces, going for walks in the second quarter, <laughs> punching people. In the middle of practice, I see constant overreactions, and mm-hmm. that tells me that there is something at the core of those relationships that's unhealthy. Yeah, and maybe it's the relationships, and that's where that's where I hesitate on this, with that they don't like playing with each other. Because maybe it's what Joe Shasky was talking about. Maybe it's, you know what, Draymond is just a step slow and a little bit less athletic than he used to be. So these stops he used to be able to get Eh, now you got these young kids who are coming off the bench and cooking him on defense. Not all the time. He's still having a good year defensively, but he gets beat more often than he did. And Steph Curry, same deal. Watching watching these other guys, because he's still playing at a high level, but you have Klay Thompson, can't quite defend how he used to, and then you're trying to incorporate some new guys, and you got two-way guys, and you're trying to... It's just a mishmash of different lineups and different personnel, and it's just not the same. And I think that might be where the frustration buildup is. And then, you know, Jordan Poole is involved in that. But I don't think it is a, hey, if you remove Jordan Poole from the equation, it's kumbaya. I still think you'd get an overly frustrated Draymond. I think you'd still get a Clay Thompson who gets frustrated and takes bad shots sometimes. You get a worse team. Yeah, no doubt. And they know that. Yes. They know that. Like, again, I'm not here to say because I don't know that. I, I don't think anybody's like, we hate Jordan Poole. They don't hate him. Draymond think, might. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. He might hate Draymond. I would. No doubt. Now, wouldn't you? If you were Jordan, be like, bleep that guy. Although I'm a pretty forgiving person. You could punch me in the face and I'd, I would talk I myself know. into, I, I probably know. earned that. You, you and I. You and I are like, we're like puppies. We just come right back. Like, hey, thank you, sir. Can I have another? <laughs> yeah. I, listen, I don't think they hate the guy. I think they're fully aware that they need him. But changing of the guards... Mm-hmm. are very hard. And the forwards and centers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Only Kyle Madsen can come up with content like that. I, I just, I, like, let me give it to you in a really light and fluffy way uh, with something I even referenced yesterday. So um, I played uh, 18 holes with my uh, 16-year-old son over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Guard done been changed. He can hit the ball farther. He can play better. It is a changing of the guard. Now, I know a lot of dads who are like, 
damn it, like you can't, right? You know, now you got to start to yeah. play the mental games because you can you can outwork light and mess yeah. with him a little bit in his backswing. Get that, that old man game. Yeah, except for this is actually my son who's a high school golfer, and I can't wait for him to be better than me. And I've known since he was six years old that he was going to be better than me. So it doesn't emotionally hit me. It emotionally hits him. He'll outdrive me and be like, hey, there you go, old man. And I'll act like it bothers me, and it doesn't. I love every single mm -hmm. piece of it. So that's a light and fluffy way, though, of talking about, I mean, yes. D is there, though, still a piece in me? It was like, damn, I, I wish I was looser like I was seven years ago when I played golf. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, I wish I was playing like I was a few years ago when I played every week and all of those things. But there's not actual emotion there. When you watch the Warriors, it's so clear that this is the same thing, but there is deep, caught, hardcore, ego, emotion, hanging on by the fingernails to, to any potential run that they may have left, and they feel empowered because mm -hmm. of what surprisingly happened last year. Right. They won it all. Jordan was wobbly in the playoffs, so they've got all the empowerment they need to be like, look... We still run this show, mm -hmm. and he's got to do it our way, not the other way around. So you said something there that I wanted to. I want to get back to it. Goes, it gets away from the the vets a little bit and goes to Jordan Poole, because Jordan Poole draws a lot of attention. I don't want to say ire necessarily, but he gets a lot of attention, and I think it's because there was an expectation, at least from me, and I think maybe from other fans, and maybe from these veterans. When you watched him in the postseason last year, there was a question of, hey, can he do it in the postseason? He lights it up at home against the Nuggets. Yep. And remember, I think it was Eddie Johnson. And he came on and was like, yeah, but can he do it on the road in the playoffs? And then he went and he did. It was like, this guy. You know, got pushed around a little bit against Memphis, figured it out enough that in game three, he's at home. I'll never forget this. I was watching him in Washington, D.C. He hits a three and he turns to the Warriors crowd and he's going, I'm him. I'm really him. And it's like, yes, Jordan, you are my guy. Finals, you saw the text. I was like, unplayable. Yep. Get him off the court. Right. Can't play. Figured out how to impact the games. Did he score 30? No, but he figured out how to have an impact. It was like, this bodes well for him in this in this next season, in the 22-23 season. And then it just hasn't played out that way. No, no. And I think that's also, are the is he making bad plays? Is he making boneheaded mistakes? Sure, but everybody does. I think there's an expectation that he would help lift this team. And right now, he's just kind of... Eh. He's just there. You said the vibes were great during the five-game win streak. A-plus vibes. Vibes, sure. Mm -hmm. Fan vibes. You had a drink? Did you have a drink? Might have had a drink, right? Oh. Chase Center. I was day drinking. Everybody loves a comeback. It was the let's, evening. let's be honest, okay? Sure, the Clippers came in, but the Pelicans, eh. It wasn't great competition, and... um. They had to rally from 15 to 20 down every single time. You can do that at home. You can't do that the same way on the no road. Doubt. And no so doubt. the vibes were great, and it was fun, but there's a potential that this was a little bit of a cloud, a little bit of a paper tiger, where mm -hmm. we thought the Warriors were in a healthier state than they were because they kept winning, and so we walked to the uh, window with, they won, it's not like they played well for four quarters. They won, but they played well for two quarters, and it was good enough. No doubt, but but Bob Myers brought this up on the executive show with Steiny and Guru, and he said there were times this year where we felt like we were going to let go of the rope, and then we didn't. I think he said this after the Portland game. Okay. And it's like, they did right, they weren't letting go of that rope. That showed a togetherness and a unity that they didn't really have earlier in the season. Or, At least it did or, to me. Or a stubbornness. Yeah. Whatever word you want to Unified use. Unified in their stubbornness. Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. No, so I yeah, thought... Yeah, they're champs. A, they're champs. And that's why I thought, okay, they're turning a little bit of a corner. And maybe yeah. they have. Maybe they're just not going to be a very good road team, and that's what it is, and they'll make the playoffs, and they'll win their home games, and we'll cross our fingers that they win one of their four road games. But I, I just... I'm not ready to... I, I, just, that's that, I think that's why I'm personally frustrated, because I can't punt. No, no, no. I'm not burying them. It's not over. Right, I know. But, like, what's the characteristic of a team when you go, hey, you could defend nine months ago and now you can't? Why? Everybody got old? I, I, you, you could win on the road better than anybody last year. You can't this year. Why? You just don't like that color uniform? 
Like, what is it? And and the characteristic of teams that do well on the road and defend is what? They're together. Mm-hmm. They're gelled. They are mature. They are that's what we, the the line is so fine in professional sports. Even that crappy team, like the Rockets, have talent. Mm-hmm. They've got great athletes on that team. What's the difference? It's veterans know how to do all the tricks, stay together, work as a cohesive unit. And so when I see this team that is quote unquote elite at home, but they can't take it on an airplane, that says to me, you've got something rotten inside the chemistry, inside the togetherness, whatever word you want to pick there. Something is sick in there. And and they have not taken the pill yet. It's so odd. It's so odd that at home, did you know at home, the Warriors' defensive rating, so the points they give up per 100 possessions, would be the best in the NBA. And their defensive rating on the road would be the second worst in the NBA. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what that's one of those things that's, that's like crazy. it's one of those things you don't understand unless you've been a professional athlete and you've traveled and you've played and you've been in locker rooms and stuff. But that's what I can't put my finger on. I think you're probably right. But it's like, why is that? Why is that that when you get on an airplane Doesn't and work. you stay in a hotel, right. you start missing backdoor cuts uh, and you start lazily not going well, around screens. What's and- been the rule through the years in the NBA? Role players, right? You mentioned Eddie Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Role players, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's what we're talking about. You're talking about how do role players, how does it work on the road? Well, it works when the role players are just kind of falling in line with the people in front of them, and it all works as a cohesive unit. And if it's not, then you get this. You get 7-25 and 25 on the road, people throwing mouthpieces, hucking their hands up in the air and going for walks in the second quarter. Mm-hmm. That's what you get when you're not together. And so that's why I started off saying what I, I would love to be convinced otherwise. But to me, if I'm a lawyer, I now have what I need mm-hmm. to go to court and accuse the Warriors <laughs> of not being together. I have a stack of exhibits. and I got a stack. And I want... And I want to make it clear for for me that I put that on those veterans, on the Steph Curry, on the Clay Thompson, yeah, on the Draymond Green. You can Green. put it on whoever it's you like, want. It's sure. like it is. It is because I agree with you on that. Like I'll, I'll I'll buy your premise. I don't. I. It's it's on those guys to like, dude, get over it. Like you're supposed to put this stuff away and go play. Draymond said. You know, I can compartmentalize this. It's all about winning. We're about winning championships, and that's what it is. But it's like, apparently, it's not. But and that's, I'm not putting that on Jonathan Kaminga. That's not on Jordan Poole to bring everybody together and go, hey, everything's fine. Okay, it's but de- not de- on him. De- devil's advocate for a second. The veterans respond and say, my guys, we, we have been hammering these young fellas on the head mm-hmm. for, for, I mean, these guys are not brand new in the system. Poole, mm-hmm. Kaminga, Wiseman, who now is gone. We've been hammering them on the head in practice and in film for three years in some cases. Mm -hmm. And we're still out here getting the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. This is not new. We have tried. We've tried to get them into the system. Now, you could argue that. You know, like you also punched one of them in the face. Sure. Right? But but what if if their answer, like if I'm Steph, let's just look at Steph. Uh I've been trying to get these guys to go the way of the championship, and we just, it's still not working. Mm -hmm. And so when we go, hey, Steve Kerr didn't develop, was he allowed to? I don't know. Sure. But you look at your $50 million athlete if he walks into your office and says, coach, get him off the floor or send him to Detroit because I can't win with him. What do you do? You just ignore him? No. Wow, but we need to develop. I, I I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm throwing out scenarios that I think something pretty it's, similar to those is happening behind the scenes. Regardless of, of whose fault it is and whether they got a chance to develop, how many NBA players come in and are just awesome in year one? And, or awesome even in year two? Yeah, well, I mean, very, like, very it's, few. It's really hard, especially sure. when you're 19, 20 years old. So that's, that's why I put this on the – it's like you have to figure out, and this is on Steve Kerr, and those and and the three guys we talked about and Andre Iguodala, I think to a lesser extent. Sure. Like y- you have to figure out how to play with those, like to make it work with those players. And I think maybe five years ago they could have, but they're at a point now 
where they they're at the point that Tim Duncan, Monty Ginobili, and Tony Parker were, where they were like, "Hey, we're going to unload a lot of this on Kawhi Leonard." Yeah, and Kawhi, you're going to help us out, and they can't they they can't do that. So that's why for me, it's like, dude, vets got to figure it out. I think the Warriors can win a title because of them. I don't think the Warriors can win a title because like, oh, Jonathan Kaminga will get better. Right. That's not what I'm leaning on. I'm banking on the guys who have done it before. Well, I, listen. I got called a negative Nelly coming out of the five game win streak because I said I still want to see I want to see two things I want to see you do it on the road mm-hmm. and I want to see you not fall down by fifteen points at the end of one. Negative ah, well. Nick. Nevertheless, <laughs> oh well, we'll try again. Uh, try again next week. <laughs> uh, 